Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, September 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft today released a security bulletin regarding an unpatched vulnerability in Microsoft Office that could lead to code execution and is currently already being exploited in targeted attacks. The vulnerable component here is MSHTML and does affect Microsoft Windows, but Office is the natural way how this would be exploited. So you would receive a Microsoft Office document. That document then contains a malicious ActiveX control. If you open the document, that ActiveX control is rendered and with that code is executed. Unlike with macros and such, there is no user interaction beyond opening the document. So you don't have to enable anything or such. So really your user uh, is very vulnerable here. It just needs the right pretense uh, to get them to open the document. The workaround that Microsoft does recommend is uh, to delete uh, four different registry keys. If you delete these registry keys, then uh, ActiveX is no longer being installed. Uh, prior installed ActiveX controls uh, will continue to run according to Microsoft. So uh, impact is likely very low. Not a lot of applications still use ActiveX. If you do have some ActiveX applications, it's likely some sort of internal enterprise applications and you probably already have those ActiveX controls installed. Of course, we have Patch Tuesday coming up next week. We'll see if Microsoft will release an official patch by then or if you're stuck with this workaround. Sounds like you do want to deploy the workaround uh, this week, not necessarily waiting for Patch Tuesday. And then we got a couple of privacy-oriented news items that I thought I'll uh, touch on. Uh, first of all, Proton VPN apparently did release the IP address of a French activist after being uh, served a warrant asking it to release uh, that IP address. Proton VPN, like many VPN services, does promise no logging. And uh, if they would have really upheld this promise, they would not have known the IP address. Well, they now remove that promise from their website. But realistically speaking, any VPN company out there that tries to be legit uh, does typically need to do some logging, need to respond to warrants. So uh, don't be too surprised if other VPN services would have done the same thing. And there have been a couple of cases where VPN services were shut down if they weren't able to provide this information. Secondly, uh, there's also a story with WhatsApp. WhatsApp, of course, uh, does uh, offer end-to-end -end encryption, but uh, some people remarked that it is possible for moderators uh, to essentially flag uh, malicious or inappropriate content. Well, a uh, WhatsApp that respond to these allegations and basically stated that the moderators will only see that content if one of the users, so one of the endpoints, forwards the message to them. So in this case, uh, the message, of course, is being decrypted by the legitimate recipient and uh, the recipient then uh, forwards that decrypted message uh, to a WhatsApp moderator. FireEye has a great blog post about uh, two malware samples they're calling private log and stash log that take advantage of the common log file system on Windows to hide the second stage of the payload. So instead of actually writing a file to a normal file system, they're hiding the content of the second stage payload in these logs. These are not your sort of classic text-based log files that you're used to from Unix systems and such. The common log file system was introduced in recent versions of Windows as of Windows Vista and later and is a binary format that you're accessing with specific Windows APIs in order to write or read logs. So Mixic 
great place to hide stuff uh, because uh, it's usually not monitored and a little bit hard to really see what's inside uh, this storage space. For more details and hashes of the samples they looked at, uh, see a FireEyes uh, blog post. Well, and that's it for today. And remember, the reason I'm putting out these podcasts is because people are listening. So make sure your friends know about it and post about it in social media or whatever. You can also listen to this podcast via Alexa's flash briefing. So you can even wake up in the morning to this podcast. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.